chessboard and queens uh, from the CSES problem set. Your task is to place eight queens on a chessboard so that no two queens are attacking each other. As an additional challenge, each square is either free or reserved, and you can only place queens on the free squares. However, the reserved squares do not prevent queens from attacking each other. How many possible ways are there to place the queens? So the input here has eight lines, and each of them has eight characters. Each square is either free, so this is represented with a dot, or reserved, uh, which is represented with an asterisk. And we have to print one integer, the number of ways uh, with which we can place uh, the queens. And for this sample input, we have that the output is 65, okay? So uh, this problem uh, essentially requires us to uh, implement a backtracking solution. So we're, we're gonna brute force uh, all of the ways uh, in which uh, a queen uh, can be placed uh, while maintaining the rules, uh, the rule of not attacking, of, ha of not having um, uh, the queen uh, attacking or being attacked uh, by, other, by some other queen. Uh, effectively, if, if a queen attacks uh, some other queen, uh, then that queen, so, so if queen A attacks queen B, then queen B will attack uh, queen A as well, okay? Uh, that's because of the mechanics of how queens attack. So for those that don't know, uh, a queen attacks um, any, any piece that it is on the same column or row uh, or diagonal as that queen is, okay? That's the rules uh, in chess. So let's go ahead and look into the solution. So here what I'm doing is um, defining these global variables here. So first of all, I have this board uh, uh, 2D Boolean array. Um, and that is because we, we need nine, we need, uh, nine uh, uh, rows and nine columns here. That is because I'm using uh, indexing from uh, one, one based indexing. So from one until eight, okay. And for the rows, it's the same. I have nine uh, uh, rows here. So nine uh, positions uh, from one until eight again. Now for the diagonals, where essentially we're gonna have the down, down right diagonals. So this diagonal here, for example, is a down right diagonal. Uh, this, this is another uh, down right diagonal and so forth, okay? Uh, and the upright ones. So an upright diagonal is this one, for example, that goes like this. This is an upright diagonal, okay, and so forth. Uh, and for these, uh, I use 50 positions and that is uh, for, for the down the right, we have uh, minus seven until seven. That is uh, because to identify a down right diagonal, we use uh, the index of the column minus the index of the row, okay? So as we can see, uh, if we move down right uh, in this diagonal, for example, we have the, the column being numbered with uh, number two and the row being numbered with number one here. So for this position, so two minus one equals to one. For this position, three minus two is also equals to one, is also equal to one. Then four minus three also equals to one, and so forth. Okay. Um, and for the upright movement, so from uh, let's let's take this diagonal here. Okay. So let's analyze the diagonal here. Uh, for the upright positions, we are adding. Uh, the, the index of the column with the index of the row. So four plus one here is five. Three plus two is five. Two plus three is five. And four plus one is also five, okay? Uh, for this position, five plus one is six. Four plus two is six. Three plus three is six. Two plus four is six. And one plus five is six. Okay, so as you can see, we can distinguish uh, upright diagonals from the sum of the indexes. Uh, and down right from the subtraction of the indexes. So uh, the lowest value we can have in the subtraction is minus uh, seven because one minus eight equals to minus seven and the highest is uh, seven uh, because uh, eight minus one equals to seven, okay? So by adding seven to these indexes, we will have this range here. So from zero up to uh, 14, so 15 positions will be enough uh, for indexing the down right uh, diagonals. And for the upright diagonals, again, 15 will be enough because 
the lowest value we can have is one plus one. So for this diagonal here, uh, which is equal to two and uh, uh, eight uh, plus eight. So for this uh, diagonal here, um, the result will be 16. So uh, we can convert this range to this range by uh, minus two. Okay, so uh, two minus two equals to zero and 16 minus two equals to 14, okay? Uh, and this variable here is the answer essentially. So for every way that we are gonna find, uh, we're gonna increment this variable here uh, by one, okay? So we initialize it with a zero uh, at the beginning. Uh, I forgot to mention that global variables are um, initialized uh, by themselves uh, into false here. So, so all of the positions in this Boolean arrays will be set to false, okay? Uh, because we have set them into the global scope. Now, this, uh, this is just the array for helping us understanding how this works. Um, and now let's uh, go ahead and see how we input uh, the data here. So for every row, I said, uh, so we go from indexes one to eight, um, and that is uh, for row uh, i, okay? So we set this to be false, uh, which this is actually obsolete because uh, the row array is already global, okay? So we, we didn't need to execute this line anyways. Um, and then uh, we go for the columns. So for all of the rows and for all of the columns is what I, I meant to say here. So index one until eight again, and we use J for the for the variable here. Uh, and we read, we read in the next character. So if that character is an asterisk, we're gonna set that uh, I J uh, position uh, to be true, essentially, okay? So if it is true, it means that uh, we have, uh, the position is reserved. And then we call the solve function, which we will uh, analyze afterwards, uh, on index one, essentially, okay? So for, for the first column, okay? We go col column by column, essentially. And after this solve um, function is done, we're just gonna output the answer, okay? So let's uh, look into this uh, solve function here. So I get the index in, in the variable called x. And here we're just gonna check if we finished placing all the queries. So if x equals to nine, okay, so we are out of the uh, bounds uh, of our chessboard. So the ninth column doesn't exist, but it means that we have reached the end. So if we have reached the end here uh, without any problems, we're gonna increase the answer um, uh, variable here, okay? And then we just return, okay? We are done essentially. Uh, otherwise, uh, X will be between the range of one and eight. And we need to put uh, the queen that is located in column, uh, this should have said X here, not X plus one. Okay, so the indexing we're using is from one until eight. Um, and then we have to select one of the eight rows. So uh, beginning from the, from the left, from the highest row, which is indexed, uh, with number one until the lowest one, which is indexed with number eight. So this is what this loop is doing here. Uh, we, first of, we first of all check that the board is not reserved on that position. Okay, so not reserved. Uh, and uh, the row for, so the i-th row is also uh, not occupied by some other queen, okay? So uh, if, we, if we try to place uh, two queens on the same row, they will actually uh, attack each other, so uh, we don't we don't want this to happen. So we check if this position is all, is false. Okay, now let's move this to the right. So uh, if the row is free, okay, and the board is free on that position, we just need to check the diagonals now. So my down right diagonal is represented by again what I said, the subtraction of the column uh, by the row plus seven. Okay. Uh, and uh, the upright diagonal uh, is defined by this, uh, the sum of the two numbers, of the two indexes, minus two, okay? So we use the indexing as we explained before. And this should be false. These positions uh, uh, on these arrays should be false, okay? Otherwise, if they are true, it means that they are occupied by some other queen, and thus uh, placing our queen there uh, will make the two queens attack each other, okay? And uh, that's not what we that, that's not what we uh, want here. 
So if the diagonals are also free, are also free, uh, we can send this uh, to the next index. Okay, so we can uh, place this queen at this position, and then uh, try and find uh, the position for the queen that will be located in the next column. Okay, so uh, here we mark uh, the row. Okay, the uh, diagonals uh, that we are occupying uh, with an uh, number one here. We'll make them this position to uh, be true, okay? So the if statements uh, will evaluate as true when uh, querying these positions here. And after we have set these positions to be true, we just uh, go ahead and try to solve for x plus one, so for the next column, essentially. And when we return from the next column, we are gonna set uh, this position uh, that we have occupied with our queen uh, free. And how we set it free uh, is by setting the row uh, the respective row uh, and uh, diagonals uh, to be false, okay, for this uh, for this uh, specific queen. Okay, and now we go backwards, okay. So there is no way we're gonna unset uh, a position unless we have set it before, because we cannot enter this if statement unless it was false initially, right? Um, so that's pretty much the solution here. So we recursively uh, go from column to column, we place our queen, and when we return, we unmark the position uh, that we have marked for that queen. Um, and if the position is reserved, we are not even gonna enter um, this if statement here, okay? So uh, that's pretty much the solution again. Um, again, it's simple recursion, simple backtracking every time uh, to check if we have found an answer. If we reach a uh, column uh, with index nine, it means that we have found the solution and we increment this answer uh, here. And after this uh, function is done, uh, we just output this answer variable. So if this video helped you uh, understanding the problem uh, and uh, help you get unstuck, if you got stuck at the process of solving it, please leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.